From United Nations Television, this is UN in Action. For centuries, Kayawaya traditional healers have made offerings to the gods to protect local herds. Domesticated thousands of years ago, alpacas and llamas are now their only source of income, according to rancher Rufino Quispe. We are 4,400 meters above sea level. You can see it's deserted. There isn't much pasture and it is not possible to plant crops because of the frost. So the only thing to sell is the alpaca. In the past, some tried raising sheep, but with little success. Now, with support from the UN's International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, many ranchers are realizing that this ancient relative of the camel may be their best shot at earning a living. Not only are they easier on the environment, but there's a growing global demand for alpaca fleece, says Guillermo Villamelo of IFAD. For the markets, it is important to generate volumes and at a high quality to negotiate a good price. If we don't improve camelid production methods, all of these farmers are going to migrate to the poor ghettos of the city. Six years ago, IFAD and the Bolivian government launched a multi-million dollar project to help thousands of ranchers increase their incomes. Among the many things ranchers learned, how to improve the genetic lines and health of their herds. Even the Kiowa's knowledge of medicinal herbs was utilized, in this case, to create an effective treatment for stomach parasites. Justo Apazo Mamani was among the first in his community to be convinced that alpacas and llamas could be a route out of poverty. I ask myself, why do I have to live in extreme poverty? Many times we had nothing to eat. I talked to my dad and I said, why don't we buy other animals with better economic prospects? Husto's family began breeding their alpacas with superior varieties from Peru, eventually creating a stronger, healthier herd. He also selected animals for their coats. White fleece, he discovered, fetch the best price in the marketplace. The first time we sold 25 male alpacas, my father received a suitcase full of money. He could not believe it. We went back home and I went out to graze the animals. When I came back in the afternoon, my father was still counting the money. Then he understood that raising alpacas was good business. And not just good business for local ranchers. Small enterprises, from meat jerky production to weaving, have sprung up across the country. Each year, Petrona Flores and her weavers cooperative spin about 1,200 kilos of alpaca fleece into shawls and scarves, destined for markets in Bolivia and Europe. Without money, we couldn't travel or leave. Now my children are in university and it's the beginning of a new life. As new markets and products continue to evolve, many believe the populations that have existed here for thousands of years may now have a future on these high Andean plains. Something the Kayawaya say could be the answer to their prayers. This report was produced by James Heer for the United Nations.